Hi students, welcome to Verbling. My name is Kendra, I'll be your teacher for this lesson. This is a series of 10 lessons called Detective Series. And this is number five out of 10, so we're halfway through the series. And if you're just starting now, that's great. Um, it's okay if you miss the first couple lessons. I'll give you a summary recap of what's happened so far. But first, before I do so, for those students out there that are trying to add the class but cannot, it's because the first couple minutes are reserved for, free, for Verbling Premium users. And those are students who have upgraded their account and it allows them to, um, to get unlimited reservations within the first few minutes of a class. So if you think that's something that you'd be interested in trying out, doing a little trial of the premium service, I'm going to pass along a link in the Verbling chat and also the Google chat. If you click on that, it leads you to a page that shows you how you can get free reservations, um, either by watching a video or by liking Verbling on Facebook or telling your Facebook friends about Verbling. And it's really awesome. You should check it out and see if you enjoy the service. If you do like it, you can upgrade your account for $25 a month. And again, that gets you unlimited reservations within the first few minutes of a class. So if you're really looking forward to a certain class or a certain teacher, you can guarantee a spot so you can actively participate instead of just viewing. All right. Um, so I'm going to start with a little recap. This is number five in the series. So in episode four, in lesson number four that I taught earlier today, Detective Bosley interviewed the gardener of Hummingbird Manor. Now let me catch you up. Hummingbird Manor is a huge mansion in which the Hummingbird family lives. And they have hired this detective, Detective Bosley, because he is trying to find a very important wedding ring that is for Emma, the daughter of the family. And the gardener explained that he was helping Oliver with his resume the night the ring was stolen. So Oliver is the son. And according to the gardener, Oliver is misunderstood by his family. The gardener called Oliver a good kid, and he spoke of Emma and her dream of traveling. He certainly didn't share everything with the detective, though. Um, maybe the housekeeper has something to say about this. So let's find out if Maria, who is the housekeeper's, who is the housekeeper and the gardener's crush, um, is truly a house angel, as he described. All right, there are some students who are adding right now. So let's go around. Let's introduce ourselves and say what country we're from. So again, I'm Kendra. I'm the Verbling teacher. I've been teaching with Verbling since January, and I love it because it gets to connect me to students all over the world who are eager and excited to learn English. And I'm teaching you from San Francisco, California in the United States. Let's start with the first student, Arthur. Hi, Arthur. Uh, hello, Kendra. How are you doing? Good. Where are you from? I'm from Armenia, but currently I live in States. And a few months I'm trying to learn English uh, with Webling. Cool. Good for you. Awesome. Welcome to class. Thanks. And then we have um, Carlos. Yes. Hi there. Uh, Good. Uh, I'm from Mexico City. Mexico City. Very cool. Welcome to Verbling. Thank you. And then we have Jaronson. Yes. Harrison. Oh, Harrison. Yes, I'm good. Oh. Um, I'm from Colombia. Um, verbal is a, is a goal for me, you know, at mm -hmm. least two hours a day. Cool. Being on verbal. That's a really good goal. And why do you want to learn English? 
Well, I would like to do a postgrade one day. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Well, good luck with your goal. That'll be. I, that should be an easy one to meet because there's classes offered 24/7 all day, multiple ones. Yes. You can find something that fits your schedule. Let's go to Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. Hi. Good night. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you. Where are you from? I'm from Colombia. Colombia, cool. Yes. Awesome. So same as Harrison. Mm -hmm. Same as same as Harrison, right? You said you were for, from from okay. Colombia sí. as well. Yes. It's Colombia too. Cool. And then we have um, the next student, Conrad. Hello, teacher. Hi. How are you? How are you? Good. How are you doing? <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Good. Yeah. What country are you from? I'm from Norway, Oslo. Norway. From Oslo. Wow. I've always wanted to go there. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, well, I'm studying English because I am applying a new job in Manchester. In Manchester. Okay. Cool. Awesome. And then the last student here, uh, Nukmal. Am I saying that correct? Nukamal, Shukor, your your microphone might be on mute because we cannot hear you. Mm. Okay, let's go to um, the next person who Hello? just added. Oh, there you are. Hi, now I can hear you. Hi, could you tell the class what what country you're from? Mm, I can't hear him. Okay, let's go on to the new student that just added, uh, Fabian. Fabian, could you introduce yourself to the class, please? Oh, Fabian, we can't hear you. You need to turn your microphone on. Uh-oh. Fabian? Yeah, Fabian. Me. Please. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Hmm. All right. So um, right now, we'll wait for those students to, um, to, up, to turn on their microphone. But in the meantime, I will give you the link in the Verbling chat and the Google chat to the Google document that we're going to be using during class. And I'm also going to screen share it with you so we can all view it together. <coughs> Okay. Now, hey, teacher, my microphone is on. Oh, hi. Hi, Fabian. Could you tell the class where you're from? <laughs> I'm from Colombia. Colombia. Cool. We have three Colombian students in here right now. Welcome. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay. So, again, this is a... Um, 10 part series called the detective series and this is number 5 out of 10 so we are halfway through the series right now and just to give you a summary of what has happened so far the hummingbird family has hired a detective the detective's name is Bosley and he's hired because Emma's wedding ring has been stolen and this wedding ring is a family heirloom. It's been passed down from generation to generation. And she is supposed to get married to her fiancé in one week. So the detective must find the ring within that time frame so that she can get married. 
So now he is questioning everyone in the family to hear everyone's story to figure out who stole the ring and why. So that's the background. And in the most previous lesson, in episode number four, Detective Bosley interviewed the gardener of Hummingbird Manor. The gardener explained that he was helping Oliver with his resume the night the ring was stolen. Oliver is Emma's twin brother. According to the gardener, Oliver is misunderstood by his family. The gardener called Oliver a good kid, and he also spoke of Emma and her dream of traveling. He certainly didn't share everything with the detective. Maybe the housekeeper has something to say about this. So let's find out if Maria, the housekeeper, is truly a house angel as the gardener described. So what do we think so far? Do we have any questions about what has happened or what is going to happen this lesson? Any, any questions so far? No. Why Oliver called her as... Oh, okay, yeah. W one more time, why did Oliver what? Why did the gardener call Oliver as a good kid? Oh, okay. Oliver described... Or, sorry, the gardener described Oliver as a good kid because he is. He's... He's a very friendly, friendly gentleman. Um, he really does want a job, but he's having a, a difficult time finding one. He has good intentions. He's a very good kid, um, and he's just kind of misunderstood by his family. Okay, so we're going to move on now. If there's no questions so far, we're going to move on to the pre-reading vocabulary. I think it's really important um, before we start the dialogue that we learn these pre-vocabulary items, or sorry, pre-reading vocabulary items. So on the left-hand side, I have these new words, phrases, idioms, phrasal verbs, and on the right-hand side, I have their definitions. So here we can get familiar with these words, and once we see them in context in the dialogue, we will understand them. And if you have any questions along the way, you can always stop me. So let's start with the first student, Arthur. Could you please read the first phrase for us? Uh, yeah. Out of godness of one's heart. Out uh, of the goodness. Goodness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of one's heart. Uh, without expecting anything in return. Good. So if you give something out of the goodness of your own heart, that means that you are doing it simply because you want to. You want to be generous. You want to give something, and you do not expect anything in return for your action. Okay, got it. Yeah, go, go ahead. Did you have a question? Is it seem like you have a, gold, a, gold, a heart like a golden heart? Wait, what? One more time. Is it seem like you have a heart of gold? Yeah. So a, a heart of gold. That is more that um, you are just a very friendly, very open, very warm person. Oh, okay. Good. Okay. Let's go on to the next student, Carlos. Could you please read this phrasal verb? Um, or sorry, this, this phrase? Yes. It's not about. Mm -hmm. It's really love to be crazy about. Good. Mm -hmm. So if you're nuts about verbling, that means that you absolutely love the verbling service. You think it's the best and the greatest. You really love it. You're just crazy about it. Mm -hmm. Good. Let's go to Harinson. The next okay. one, please. I, I can have a question with the yeah. last one. Mm -hmm. uh, when you 
you say really love is referring to uh, only something or you can also say nuts about someone. Oh yeah, okay, so you can say nuts about and then you can do plus a noun, um, an object, or a person. So I'm I'm nuts about cookies. I'm nuts about uh, verbling. I'm nuts about mm, Sam, whoever Sam is. You can say any of those things. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You can even do um, the gerund. You could say, oh, like, I'm nuts about swimming in the ocean. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. Um, could you please read the next one for us? Okay. Talk, talk someone out of something. Definition. To have an interest, an interest in something or someone. Good. So if you... Um, uh, oh wait, this is, sorry, this is for the next one. To talk someone out of something is to convince them to not do an action. Sorry, I had accidentally repeated the one below. So let's say that you are thinking about driving from 1 in the morning until 4 in the morning to get to your destination. And I might say, you know what, I don't think that's the best idea. So I would try to talk you out of it. I would dissuade you from doing whatever you plan on doing. Does it seem like warning? Mm, warning would be a little bit different. You're, you're trying to be cautionary and dissuade someone from doing something that might seem foolish. So you're trying, you, you talk them out of doing whatever action they want to do. Good. Mm -hmm. Good questions, you guys. Okay, let's move on to the next student, Conrad. Yeah, teacher. Mm -hmm. Could you please read aloud the thing that's highlighted? Okay, okay. To have a thing for, to have an interest in something or someone. Mm -hmm. So if you have a thing for, um, a thing for Sam, that means that you have you have your eye on him. You have a little love interest in him. Or if you have a thing for football. Yeah, football. That means that you enjoy watching the sport or you love playing the sport. Mm -hmm. For example, I have have a thing for food. For what? For food. For food? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be um, something, so any noun, or someone, so a person. Okay. Good. Let's go to the last student. And how do you pronounce your name? Is it Nukmal? Yep, Nukmal. Nukmal. Okay, great. So could you please read, what is a love triangle? Love triangle is romantic interest of three people of couples in which feelings are not mutual. Good. So there are a love triangle. If you think about a triangle, it has three different points. Yeah. So these can be individual people or it can be groups of people. And person A could be in love with person B, but person C is in love, or sorry, person A, let's here, I'll illustrate it here. Let's say A is in love with B, but B is in love with C, and C is in love with A. So nothing is matching up. It's a love triangle. All right, let's go back to the first student, Arthur. The next one, please. Uh, okay. Drive someone bonkers uh, to make someone feel very upset or crazy. Good, excellent. So if someone is driving you bonkers, they're just driving you up the wall. They are making 
making you so angry, so annoyed. It's causing you to be very upset and even a little bit crazy. Okay, let's go on. Yes. Um, could I say, for example, in that case, to make someone feel cranky? So cranky. Did you say cranky with a with an N? Cranky. Yeah. So cranky is when you're um, irritable. Um, yeah. yeah. And it's usually due to lack of sleep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that that's different than bonkers. Bonkers is um, more associated with crazy. Good. Okay, let's go on to Carlos. The next one, please. Yes, a good catch. A person with fine qualities for a relationship. Good. So if a person or a little love interest if they're a good catch that means that they're they are quality they're a great person they're potentially they're an excellent life partner they're good all right let's go on to the next student who just who just added here um harold hi harold Oh, Harold, could you turn your microphone on? Let's wait a little bit so he can figure it out. Harold. Okay, let's skip him for right now. Uh, Yarinson, next one, please. Okay. The fuss, the attention of co or concern. Good. So if you fuss over something, it's you're you're worried or concerned about the the attention of the details. To fuss. Someone could say, "What's the fuss about? What's going on? What what's the thing that everyone's paying attention to?" Let's go on to Conrad. The next one, please. The next one? Uh-huh. Uh, a stitch. Mm-hmm. A tiny bit. Oops. Yeah, a, a tiny bit. A tiny, tiny bit. Mm-hmm. Good. So a stitch. Um, you could say... A stitch, a stitch in time, and that means a, a small, a small little bit of time. Oh, did did someone have a question? Is it still light lightning? Pardon? Is it still light lightning? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Could could you repeat your question? Is it? I mean, stitch is something that is very lightning or. Uh, I'm, could, could you type your question? I, I can't quite hear you because your volume is kind of low. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. Never mind. Okay, all right. Um, so we just had a new student who added the class, Jose Luis. Jose Luis, can you hear me? Hmm. Okay, so let's go back to the, the first student, Arthur, please. Yeah, any old, uh, no special requirements. Right, so if someone says, um, I, I need to have a computer at my work, at my, at my desk, and you could say, I, and any old computer will work. It doesn't matter what kind it is, it doesn't matter if it's brand new or if it's a few years old, just any old thing will do. No special requirements. Or if um, someone offers you a, a cup of tea and they say, what kind of tea would you like? There are many different options and you might say, ah, any old tea, it doesn't matter, whatever one, I have no special requests or requirements. Okay. Let's move on to the next student, Carlos. Yes. You missed me. 
what someone says goes. You can argue with or change this person's mind. Good. Excellent. So, a lot of times if, if your mom says something, whatever she says goes. So, she, she's the boss or maybe whatever your dad says goes. So, there's no arguing with him that you're not going to be able to change their mind. They're set in their decision. Are there any questions about the new vocabulary items that we just learned? Is it all clear? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Could you could you explain me again um, the meaning of itch? Stitch. Yeah. So it's a tiny bit. So, for example, a stitch in time could be just a few seconds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? Okay. So now we're going to move on to the dialogue. And remember, this is a dialogue between the detective Bosley and the housekeeper, Maria. And the directions say, fill in the blanks with the words from the vocabulary list. Now I'm going to read aloud the dialogue. And you can listen to my pronunciation, and you can listen to, to their words, the content of their dialogue. And when I come to a blank, I will pause. And anyone and everyone can shout out the correct answer that they think fits best. And it'll be one of the vocabulary items that we just reviewed. OK? OK. All right, so the housekeeper says, I apologize if I don't seem excited about you being here. I don't watch TV like the others do. Detective, no apologies. What can you tell me about the night the ring disappeared? I was here in the kitchen arranging some roses that Martin had brought in. I didn't hear anything strange. Can you describe your relationship with the gardener? We take our breaks together. Did you know he brings Emma fresh roses every day? Is that a job requirement, or does he do it out of the goodness of his... One heart. Mm-hmm, good, of his own heart. He's nuts about Emma. He loves Emma. You should have seen his face when he found out that she was engaged. He can't stand Paul. Paul is Emma's fiancé. Paul is the future husband of Emma. So he doesn't think Emma should go through with it? Did he tell her that? Martin's too nice to try to talk her mm of it. Good. Talk her out of it. Thank goodness. I take it you approve of the wedding. I'm counting down the days. Aha! So you have a mm for Martin. I'm, I'm sorry, what was that? I can't hear you. One more time? I think. Not. Four. And you see, not. Okay, so. No, because we already have nuts about up here. So let's scroll up. You have a theme for. Good, you yeah. You have a thing. That means you have a little interest. You have a little little crush. You have a thing for Martin. This is some love triangle. Emma doesn't even like roses. That girl would rather have a cactus by her bed. What about Paul? Doesn't he get jealous when the gardener brings his fiancée flowers? It drives him bonkers. 
Paul acts as if Emma is the only woman on this planet. Well, Emma is a good catch. Personally, I don't see what all the mm is about. All the boss? Good. I don't understand what the big deal is. I don't see what all the fuss is about. She's never worn a stitch of makeup. Never mind fine jewelry. Then why doesn't Paul just give her any old ring? Paul doesn't make the decisions around here. What Cynthia mm, says, goes. someone goes. What Cynthia says goes. So Cynthia is the mother of Emma. And Cynthia said that you cannot get married unless you find that ring. And if you can't find it, then I will hire a detective to do so. Okay. So are there any questions so far about the dialogue that just happened between the housekeeper and the detective? No. No? Okay. Do I have two student volunteers that would like to read aloud the parts of the housekeeper and the detective and I will correct your pronunciation? Okay, me. Okay, Nukmal, you can be the housekeeper and who wants to be the detective? Me. Okay, Yarinson, go ahead, you two. I apologize if I don't seem excited about you being here. I don't watch TV like the others do. Good, so I apologize. Apology, apologize. Apologize, good, excellent. No apologize. What can oh, you wait, tell wait, 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 wait. Time out? Okay, so here, this is apologize. Apologize. And then up over here, it's apologies. Apologies. Good. So with the Z, apologize. Everyone say it. Apologize. Apologize. Good. And then everyone say this one. Apologies. Apologies. Good. Excellent. Okay, you can continue. No apologies. What can you tell me about the night the rain disappeared? Good. I was right here in the kitchen arranging some roses that Martin had bought in. I didn't hear anything strange. Can you describe your relationship with the gardener? We take our breaks together. Did you know her brings Emma fresh roses every day? Is that a job requirement or does he do it out of the goodness of his own heart? Of his own heart. Of his, of his own heart. Excellent. He is not about Emma. You should have seen his face when he found out she was engaged. He can't start Paul. Good. So he doesn't think Emma should go through with it. Through with it. Good. Did he tell her that? Martin's too nice to talk to her to talk to try to talk her out of it. Thanks goodness. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Good. I take you approve of the wedding. Wedding. I'm counting down the days. Aha. Uh -huh. So you have a theme for Martin. This is some love a triangle. Good love triangle. Love Emma triangle. doesn't. Emma doesn't even like Lord roses. That girl would rather have the cactus on her bed. By her bed. Oh, sorry, by her bed. Good. What about Paul? Doesn't he get a jealous when the gardener brings his fiance flowers? It drives him bonkers. Paul acts as if Emma is the only woman on this planet. Good. Well, Emma is a good catch. Personally, I don't see what all of fuss is about. She's never worn a stitch of makeup. Never mind fine jewelry. Then why doesn't Paul just give her any old ring? 
Paul doesn't make the decision around here. What Cynthia says goes. What Cynthia says goes. What Cynthia says goes. Excellent. Good job, you two. Do I have two more student volunteers that would like to practice their pronunciation? Anyone else in the class? If not, we can move on. Come on, don't be shy. <laughs> go on. Okay, so let's go on. Let's go on to these comprehension questions. Let's start with the first student, Carlos, number one. Why does Maria apologize to the detective? Uh, because she's not excited like the other people. Right, mm-hmm. Yeah, because all the others are excited and she doesn't really care. Yes. Let's go on to the next person, Harold. Number two, which of the following best describes the gardener's feelings towards Paul? Does he love him? Does he like him? Does he dislike him? Or can he not stand him? Oops. Oh, okay, I think his um, his microphone's still on mute. Yarinson, number two. Which of the following best describes the gardener's feelings towards Paul? I, I don't really know. No? Can I stand, maybe? Right, yeah. He can't stand him because he is a little bit in love with, with, with Emma. Mm -hmm. It said earlier in the dialogue, here I'll point it out, um, right here, the housekeeper says, he's nuts about Emma and he can't stand Paul. Okay, let's move on to the next student, Conrad, number three please. Why is Maria counting down the days until the wedding? Um. Because she's waiting. The wedding. Why is she counting down the days until the wedding? I don't know. I'm reading. Okay, so let's go up to the dialogue. And it says right here, the housekeeper. I'm counting down the days. And why is this? Aha! So you have a thing for Martin. This is some love triangle. So the housekeeper likes Martin. And Martin likes Emma. And Emma is going to marry Paul. So you see, none of these connections are mutual. They're all one way. They're not going two ways. They're not reciprocal. So the housekeeper is counting down the days to the wedding because then maybe Martin will have to give up his love for Emma. And maybe he could eventually get together with the, with the housekeeper. All right. Okay, so let's go on to the next student, uh, Nuk Nukmal. Mm -hmm. Number, let's see, where were we? Number four. Why does Maria mention a cactus? So I think this one, Maria, is being sarcastic to uh -huh. Emma. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, she's saying, oh, she'd rather have a cactus by her, by her bed. She's kind of sarcastic. She's a little bit snarky. Because she's a she's jealous that um, Emma is receiving attention from the gardener. Good. Let's go back to the beginning, Carlos, please. Number five. What discovery does the detective make about romantic interests in Hummingbird Manor? Okay. 
I don't know. So he discovers that there is a love triangle. Because oh. he says, aha, he discovers it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go on to the next student, Yarinson. Number six, true or false? Maria thinks Emma is a good catch. I think it's false because the person who thinks Emma is a good catch is the detective. Wait, one more time? False. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's false. Because it's the I, detective that says it. Yes. Good. Excellent. All right, number seven. Um, let's move on to Conrad. According to the housekeeper, why can't Paul give Emma a different ring? Okay. Um, because she's never worn a stitch of makeup. But why can't Paul give Emma, his fiancée, a different ring? The first ring is stolen, but why can't he give her just any old ring? So let's scroll up to the dialogue. And it said, Detective asks, then why doesn't Paul just give her any old ring? Why can't he replace it with another one? And the housekeeper says, Paul doesn't make the decisions around here. What Cynthia says goes. So what Cynthia requests is that they find the original ring that was stolen. So that's why Paul cannot just go out and buy a new one and replace it. Okay, so are there any questions about the dialogue? No. Sorry, uh, so who is Cynthia actually? Cynthia is the mother of Emma and Oliver. Emma and Oliver are twin siblings. Uh -huh. okay. And Cynthia is the mother. Mm -hmm. Good. All right, so let's go on to the vocabulary review. I'll put it on one page. On the left-hand side, we have all of these idioms and vocabulary items used in sample sentences. And on the right-hand side, we have um, the meanings, okay? So I'll read aloud this. I'll read all of these out to you. Number one. I take it you are going to the wedding. Number two, she did it out of the goodness of her own heart. Number three, it's a strange love triangle. Number four, she has a thing for him. Number five, it drives her bonkers. Number six, he's nuts about making movies. Number seven, she's a good catch. Number eight, what she says goes. Number nine, he won't talk her out of it. Number 10, choose any old flower. And number 11, she doesn't wear a stitch of it. So here are the idioms, they're the phrases, the vocabulary items that we just learned. So let's go on the right hand side and here we have letter A. Oliver loves making films about his family. So which sentence number 1 through 10 or 1 through 11 matches letter A? Six. Six. Yeah, he's nuts about making movies. Good. So here I'll put the answers like this. Letter B. It doesn't matter which flower you pick. Any old flower. Number, number 10. Number 10. Choose any old flower. Good. Oops. Letter C. 
I assume you'll be attending. Number one. Mm -hmm. I take it you are going to the wedding. So it's my understanding that you will be coming. I assume that you will be attending. Letter D. Leela hates the way Paul stares at Emma. Number four. Number four. Four. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. He hates the way Paul stares at Emma. It really annoys her. Five. It bothers her. Five. Five. It drives Five. her yeah. bonkers. Exactly. It drives her bonkers. Five. It drives her nuts. Uh huh. Good. Okay, next one. Emma doesn't wear any makeup. Eleven. Yeah, she doesn't no. wear a stitch of it. F. Maria has a crush on Martin. Number two. Number three. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Number four. <laughs> so what is it? What, what do you guys think? Two, three, or four? Number, I think it's number four. Yeah, she has a thing for him. She has a little crush for Martin, a little love interest. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Excellent. G. Maria cleaned Martin's room for free. Number two. Mm -hmm. She did it out of the goodness of her own heart. She did it because she wanted to and she did not expect anything in return. H. All of the guys in town want to date Emma. She's a good catch. What number is that? Seven. Number seven. Good. Everyone must abide by Cynthia's rules. When someone says goes. And what number is that? Eight. Number eight. Good. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Oops. J. Martin won't tell Emma not to get married. Nine. Mm -hmm. He won't talk her out of it. He doesn't want to inject himself into the situation. Yep. Okay, Maria likes Martin. Three? Is a, a strange love triangle? Yeah, this one is love triangle. Uh huh. So, oh yeah, sorry. Whoops. Um, I didn't read the whole thing. Maria likes Martin. Martin likes Emma, and Emma likes traveling. Exactly, it's the love triangle. The letter, or number three, and it's letter K up here. Good. Are there any more questions about these new vocabulary items? No. All clear? Yeah, clear and sound. Okay, so we're going to move on to this exercise. We have just a few more minutes of class. So it says, choose the correct response to each statement. So I will read aloud the statement, and I will read aloud the three possible answers, and then you will tell me which one is the correct one, which one best fits. All right. Number one, why does everyone listen to Cynthia? A. What she says goes. Yep, B. This one. She takes it out on him. Or C. She's not a good catch. A. A. Uh huh. What she a. says goes. She, she's the boss. She's the one in control. So whatever she says, everyone has to listen and follow. Number two. Does Paul like it when Emma gets flowers from the gardener? A. He's nuts about Emma. B, no, it drives him bonkers. Or C, now they are engaged. B. Number B. Uh-huh, letter B, I good. No, it drives him bonkers. It annoys him. It bothers him. All right, next one, number three. Did Oliver play the gardener, or sorry, did Oliver pay the gardener to say nice things about him? A, no, the gardener did it out of the goodness of his heart. B, she probably has a secret crush on him. Or C, 
He tried to talk him out of it. A. A. Okay. So no, he did it out of the goodness of his own heart. He loves Oliver. So of course he said nice things about him. Number four. Why does the gardener treat Emma to flowers every day? A. Emma likes any old flower. B. Maybe he has a thing for her. Or C. She does it out of the goodness of her heart. B. B for ball. Mm hmm. Good. So maybe he has a crush on Emma. Maybe that is the motivation behind his flower gifting. Number five. What did the gardener say when the detective said he'd be questioning Maria next? A. He tried to talk the detective out of it. B. It's a bit of a love triangle. Or C. I take it you're next. A. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I so. Sleeping. This what am I? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so num number five, um, this was actually from the previous lesson. So towards the end of the interview with the gardener, the detective mentions that he's going to interview Maria next. And the gardener says, oh, she's an angel. She would never steal. You don't even need to waste your time interviewing her or questioning her. So he tried to dissuade the detective. Yeah. He tried to talk him out of it. Yeah. Number six, how much makeup does Emma usually wear? A, Emma has a thing for hiking boots. B, she doesn't wear a stitch. Or C, I take it you know why. B. B. Good, excellent. Mm -hmm. She doesn't wear makeup. All right. So, are there any questions about what has happened during this dialogue? Is it all good? Yeah, everything is good. Okay, awesome. So here I have a little a little um, preview. So stay tuned. The next suspect is Paul. And remember, Paul is Emma's fiance, so her future husband. And it says, review the intro to this series to find out his relationship to the widow. Will Paul get to marry Emma or not? We'll find out. So this was number five out of ten. And I am teaching um, a couple more lessons on... Let's see. I am teaching those. When are those happening? I'm teaching two tomorrow. Or sorry, two on Wednesday, one on Thursday, and then the last two um, on the next Thursday. So if you guys are interested in finding out whatever happened to the stolen ring and who did it, you can follow... Um, you can like me and follow on Facebook. I'll give you the link to that in the Verbling chat and the Google chat if you're interested in attending those lessons. Um, if you like and follow me, I post videos of my classes, documents that I use, and I also update my status with upcoming classes. If you ever have any questions about English, you're more than welcome to message me on Facebook. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Very much. Thank you so much nice for your you. participation. You guys were great. Nice to meet you too. Bye. -bye. Okay, Bye. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. <laughs>